Let's look at some Mario Kart clones for the Nintendo Switch. Now the Nintendo Switch has what's arguably the best Mario Kart game ever made. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, a game that's phenomenal and I still won't recommend it at full price because it's an updated port of a Wii U game. But with a great game comes a lot of clones, especially if it's a particularly popular game. So come along for today's video as we look at some Mario Kart clones. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Welcome to Stuff We Play, home of everything weird and retro, and today we're looking at something that's super weird, and if that's cool to you, why not subscribe? I like looking at weird clones and knockoffs of games. I did an entire video dedicated to Sonic the Hedgehog clones, and I've even looked at several clones in depth. Perhaps one of these days I'll even look at Mario proper and look at a game such as the Great Guiana Sisters for the Amiga. But today we're taking a look at some Mario Kart clones, and why don't we start off with one that's actually pretty good. We're talking about Beach Buggy Racing, a game that's honestly way better than it deserves to be. Yes, it's a mobile port, and yes, there's a mode that literally makes it so the game auto-accelerates, much like in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe now I think about it. All you have to do is steer, and for some reason this is the only mode you can play in a multiplayer mode. But the game itself is still fun. It doesn't look phenomenal, but it's certainly passable, and it's a really decent clone that has kind of a more Hawaiian theme to it. Instead of carts per se, you're in beach buggies, and you can actually use money that you earn in-game, yes, no microtransactions here, to upgrade your cars. Also, a lot of them have these really silly names. My favorite one is the Lambini. All the characters here are just as wacky. What I also like here is a single-player campaign. Unlike in Mario Kart, where all you can really do is try to get first place in triple stars and unlock all the kart parts, here, the individual single-player mode actually takes you through a variety of challenges and a bunch of stages, and I'll be honest, this is one I haven't been able to beat. A lot of these stages get really difficult. This game isn't perfect, and if you don't own Mario Kart 8 and want a kart racer on the cheap, at 10 bucks American, Beach Buggy Racing is an absolute must-pick-up. Moving on from a game that's dirt cheap, let's talk about a game that was really expensive on the Wii U. Perhaps the most expensive game on the Wii U. But it's out now on the Switch, and it's a Mario Kart clone. Or really and truly a Mario Kart ripoff. Hello Kitty Cruisers of Sanrio friends for the Nintendo Switch. Hello Kitty Cruisers is quite a thing. First off, I really want to review this game when it came out. I do have a review coming out. But this is American exclusive. And Europe apparently. It is not out in Canada. So I actually had to create an American eShop account and download the game. I even checked for some friends who work for EB Games up here. This game is not getting a physical release either, which means if I were you, I'd probably keep your copy sealed because this game is going to get just as rare as the Wii U version, potentially. Hello Kitty Cruisers is a pretty standard Mario Kart clone. You can definitely see that I was inspired by Mario Kart 7 and 8, or at the very least Sega and All Stars Racing Transformed. This is mainly because along with carts, you have planes and you have boats. However, unlike an All Stars Racing Racing Transformed or Mario Kart 8, you don't transform into these throughout the stage, rather you just choose one at the beginning of each stage and then you're stuck with that. Also, there's no different CC modes either. You see how slow it is, how that's pretty much like half of 50 CC in your basic Mario Kart game? That's the fastest you can go here. This game also gives you the impression that there's going to be at least 16 different stages, however in fact there's only 4, each with a variant for boats, planes, and carts. The game itself is bright and colorful, but it also looks a lot like something you'd expect to see on the GameCube, and also, what, what's with this challenge mode? I've gotten three stars on literally every single challenge in the challenge mode, and I got nothing, but literally not, not even a thank you? No credits? What is this? What's also very strange here though, is as this is a game that got a physical release in the Switch and as a kart racer, you'd think it'd have some sort of online features. But no. I mean, don't get me wrong, it does have up to four player multiplayer, but you know, good luck trying to find someone besides K19 who'd want to play Hello Kitty Cruisers on Nintendo Switch with you. Thus, if you want to become a Hello Kitty Cruisers for Nintendo Switch World Champ, you better start posting your time trials down in the comment section below, because there's no online or leaderboards or anything like that. As much as I love to meme on this game, especially if you follow me on Twitter, it's just nothing really special, and that 40 bucks, I really can't recommend this. Not even for 30, maybe for 10, but even then, at 10 bucks you can get Beach Buggy Racing, which is a better game. There is one last game for the Nintendo Switch that we're talking about today, and it's perhaps the worst game I've played on a Switch yet. We're talking about Drone Fight. Never heard of it? Neither did I, but I had some extra money left over from an eShop gift card and was like, why not? What's the worst it can be? And the answer is, I wasted five bucks on this. Drone Fight is, well, just that. 
It's a Mario Kart clone where you play as drones, which would be pretty cool because quadcopters, well, along with being able to go forward and back, they can go up and down. And that means that you should expect some pretty awesome courses. I mean, I love flying stages in kart racers. As a, I use the Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed example again. But no, these are actually pretty standard arenas and oh god, ah, this is hideous. If this looked any worse, it'd make Bubsy 3D cry. So aside from being fugly, the controls are extremely twitchy, which to the game's credit, the same can be said for a lot of quadcopters. But that's all the credit it's getting here because the issue of the stages here is they all have pretty simple designs, which means, okay, well, don't go over to obstacles and just try to win, you know, as long as you stay on track. But no, instead you have to fly through rings, a la Superman 64. Wow, there's really a trend of terrible, crappy games forcing you to fly through rings. Now, if you miss any of these rings, Things, then it doesn't count your lap and you can instantly go from first to last of course the AI never has any trouble flying through these rings but you get this some of these rings require you to make a sharp right turn or perhaps even turn around the worst is perhaps is one where it's literally a big arena it looks like something that they hold a dog show in it has no rhyme or reason it feels like they're placed randomly drone fight for the Nintendo switch is the worst piece of crap I've ever seen in my entire life and I've seen some crap. Actually, I take that back. Sonic 06 is, is still worse. It just kind of edges out. What Mario Kart clones are really clones of any game series should I look at in the future? Let me know down in the comment section below. And while you're at it, why don't we subscribe to Stuff We Play for more great content like this. So with that, thank you very much for watching. Stay classy, and I'll see you next time.